yeah great all right uh let's let's continue uh, i know um uh, yesterday you were talking about uh putting in an irrigation system um uh to to water plants during the, the lean dry times mm -hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about that yes definitely this is a new feature for us the first four years of the project we watered using tanks of water taken from our home oh yeah right and we had a, God. after that we were able to have a, a low pressure uh, water uh, outlets that we used to um, irrigate the area with a hose yep. manually and this year in August we finally uh, installed an automatic system. At the beginning we really didn't want to go to this to this because uh, yep. we, um, irrigation is also part of living this area, no? so of spending time in the area, observe what is around you. But it's true that with this very prolonged drought during the summer was really taking a lot of our volunteering time. Yep. We decided maybe better to invest in uh, educational uh, activities and, and that's the reason. Yes. And this probably also helps to better manage water because because we can monitor, monitor the consumption. Yep. We know how much water we give. Yeah, um, you can do some measurement on that and understand the um, metrics around yes. what's required. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, often you don't need big big amount of water. Often you need the water at the right moment. So exactly, uh, it's enough to maybe uh, interrupt this long drought period, yep. giving even a, a little bit of water for. Uh, letting the plants recover and yeah great really healthier. you're using drippers in the in system the, yes the, we have um, two different type of uh, systems we have a dripping system uh, for the areas where we have plants more in a straight uh, row in a row yeah in a row uh, along the along the edge maybe along, along the edges yeah yes. um on the on the road edge mm -hmm. is that right yes yeah. Uh, while in the parts where the vegetation is a bit uh, more um, not geometrically organized, let's say, yep. we, we use the, this uh, uh, spray system. The sprayers, uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Night, night, yeah, water, time, night watering? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. yep. Great. Um, I can see this looks like Szechuan pepper. Is this right? No. No? No. It no. looks a little bit like, but he likes the, the ah, thorns. Likes the thorns. Yes. There you go. Uh, this is a, the Siberian pea. So it's a, another nitrogen fixer. Yep. We try to have a, a different plant because we have a lot of eleanios. And ah. we want to spray also with this one. And it's doing okay. Um, oh, you can see the pea. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. We can see the... And they are normally good for uh, feeding animals uh, mainly. But they are also edible for us. But I admit I never tried yet. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, great. Let's um, come around this way. Mm -hmm. uh, calendulas. Yeah, we have several uh, different occasional, occasional uh, plants. As I was showing you, we have this uh, uh, calendula. It's not here right now. It's mainly in spring. We have yep. here the lemon. Uh, lemon verbena, yes. No, now, what was this one you were talking about? This yes, yesterday? this is a very rustic, uh, self, very well self seeding plant. It's Salvia sclarea. Um, it makes it's a type of salvia with very big leaves that you can eat as splitters. Um, so, edible. Fantastic. And it also makes fantastic uh, flowering uh, stalks. So, heads. those little those leaves there, you can eat them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, of course, these are small because the plant is uh, not fully developed but uh, in spring before they go to flower they develop it maybe yep. there, see if you can see much bigger, oh, okay let's have a look at those ones yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah much bigger leaves yeah god that's one of the salvias a bit hairy but when you cook them make a nice fritter yeah terrific we call this the biodiversity bench huh? because in spring here it's really beautiful you're surrounded yeah. by the flowering <laughs> of the autumn olive by the Salvia sclerea, uh, the clams. I love it. Pears on your side. Yeah, so. yeah. The biodiversity bench. Yeah. That how, how good is that? Yeah. And That's the nice smell also from uh, the different aromatic plants. This is Helichrysum italicum that is a very strong crescent uh, smell, similar to licorice. Okay. Uh, so it's very cor a nice corner to to sit down. To sit down in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to continue? Mm -hmm. walking through maybe yeah. point out some of your favorites or things of interest yeah, we have uh, for example the 
bloody peach. It's called like that because the peach has a red pulp. Ah, the red it's ones. A, yeah, yeah. It's a heirloom variety from this area. Ah. So several of the fruit trees that you see here were, are actually heirloom varieties that we got from the Custodian Agriculture uh, Association of uh, Parma Province. Oh, it's fantastic. A group of, uh, Farmers that uh, are trying to preserve uh, heirloom variety that you normally don't that find. That is so anymore. good. Oh, that's great mm -hmm. that you've connected with with that the, those guys, you know. Yes. Um, and have, and have, and have they visited? Have they have had a look at the gardens? Yes, yeah, some of them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Were. And uh, so this area also works as a I call it a, 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 a library because people can come here and take. Uh, uh, small branches and graft them uh, and create uh, and preserve, continue preserving uh, the this yeah. heirloom variety. Yeah, yeah. That's also useful for that. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. This peach was very, very productive. We thought it was actually at the end of its uh, its uh, life cycle because the peaches are not really well adapted to, to Parma climate and uh -huh. soils. But in reality, we had the highest production ever this year. Wow. Like several tens of kilos yeah. for each, uh, each of the trees. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But the um, just the, the piles of um, grass. That's a deliberate strategy of providing some habitat. Is that yes, exactly. Is that right? Habitat and also leaving nutrients on the yeah. spot. Yeah. That's where they were, uh, you know, uh, generated, and we don't want to take them away. Mm, so no. the mo most of what we cut, we leave uh, in the area, or we compost and then bring back. Yep. And this helps providing habitat, nutrients, and of course, also especially increasing uh, organic matter content of our soils. Yeah. Because uh, nutrients were already here, but the carbon that we store in these plants is actually, was actually taken from the atmosphere and put into the plants. And now we want it to go into the soil. Yes. Because it, this is a very important process that we want to... You want to try and um, promote oh, that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 All right, shall we keep going? Yeah. What's this? Lemon bars. Yeah, there's so easy. much going on in here. Lemony, you know? smell. Yeah. Artisanal plants. With this, most of these plants you can do nice infusion or you can add them to salad. Yeah. And of course, add also Diversity to your nutrition that is also an important aspect. Actually, we had a, a student from UK that, that did a doctoral thesis on biodiversity, nutritional biodiversity of peach forests. Oh. And she was collecting biodiversity data in, in our peach forest. So, very interesting study. I'd love to see that work. Um, yeah, yeah that would be good to uh, post up a link uh, around that. Okay, great. Uh, more uh, cardoon. In here, uh, what are, what's this one? This is an apple? Plum. It's a plum. It's a plum? Yeah. Okay. It's an ocean heirloom variety from Piacenza. Grossa Piacentina is called. Big from Piacenza. Ah, and, and Piacenza is very close to here, isn't it? Yes, about uh, 45 minutes drive. Yeah. Uh, train. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Train. <laughs> oh, great. And, uh, here you see the salvia, of course. Salvia. salvia yes. And also this. Uh, Great uh, garlic. It's very beautiful. It flowers in autumn yes. when there are not many flowers around. Yep. Plus, it's fully edible from seeds to the bulbs to the leaves. Very nicely. Al Allium tuberosum. Yep. yep. Nice. I love your little signs too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but but there was a pitfall with uh, with this, wasn't it? Do you want to just talk about um, ah, yes. it's, 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 the, the problems that you had with uh, with QR codes. Yes, yes. You meant to have a QR code to link to the uh, plant for a future database information, a great database that gives uh, a lot of information about plants, how to propagate them, but also about their edibility. Uh, unfortunately, here we wanted to provide a translation in Italian and we linked with the Google Translate tool, but then Google Translate tool changed their way they build the URL and so the it's not currently working, but we will fix it in the next uh, edition of the label. Uh, good, because that's a lot of work. Because how many plant labels are there here? Ah, yes, there are uh, over 300 different uh, labels, indeed. Yeah. And for each label, we have the different uses of the plants yep. that you can have, uh, which parts are edible. Of course, the Latin name, the Italian, the English. Yes. And the family to which the plant belongs, family of plants. And people really like this feature. You can see yeah. people walking here really wondering 
what they are looking at, and then when they see the label, I really they can read it. Yeah. yeah, and that, and if they can get the QR code to work, they can explore even more. Yep. Good right. Yeah, maybe I, I didn't say it. Uh, not all plants were planted by us. Huh? Uh, many plants were actually planted by birds. <laughs> so this, I think, is a very nice concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also the fact that the, uh, here in our area, the climax, uh, climax um, system would be a forest, deciduous uh, forest. Uh, mm, and of course, uh, the territory wants to get to that stage of yeah. ecological evolution. Mm. And, uh, in, this, in this area, we are trying to let nature express itself. Mm. And then you can see really how uh, spontaneous plants are adding up to what we are cultivating and they're really pushing towards this uh, forest uh, uh, system. system. Very interesting. Uh, we past couple of uh, years, we start seeing a lot of oaks coming up. Oaks. One of the main uh, right. uh, trees of the climax. climax uh, stage here yep uh, so this is, i think is a very interesting concept you see this forest really pushing, pushing out up. the ground yeah to, to take are there to any are there any uh, plants that we're looking at now that the birds have planted yes indeed uh, uh, yeah normally the most vigorous uh, because it's there's a really big difference between what we plant so there are normally transplanted trees grafted trees that uh, have already gone through a lot of trauma let's say yeah and so they they start with some issues and they require more care irrigation while what grows naturally is much more vigorous and independent here you can see some walnuts for example in the ah, yeah, the walnuts, all the yeah. walnuts in the area were not planted by us oh, by birds God. of course walnuts is a uh, wow. very looked after uh, fruits by birds so there's um, a walnut tree here yeah uh, behind you see a, a spontaneous volunteering uh, cherry tree Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so the birds planted the cherry tree? Yes. Well, well probably the, the walnuts, they actually actively um, put underground the, the nuts for the cherry, probably was just a random uh, dropping. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Also some uh, wild apple, ox, as I was saying before. Um, yep. Also Prunus cerasifera, mirabel. Uh, okay. Type of uh, small plum that is uh, an autochthone plant. Here, of our woodland. Fantastic. Well, thank you, birds. We, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hidden there, you see a, oh, yeah. a house for adults. Other very useful. Uh, Got a little hedgehog friend. house yeah. in there. Indeed. Uh, this can work as a summer temporary residential place or also as a winter. Oh, huge. Yeah, great. Up to them. Um, and underneath an ornamental plant, is my understanding. It's not it's a mainly ornamental, yes, but it's yep. also a very useful uh, uh, bird plant because you can see it produces a lot of fruits that uh, mm. last long through the winter. So, and also it's a evergreen plant. What's its name? Evergreen. So, ah, it's a piracanta. Piracanta. Yeah. Okay. Well, look at all the berries on it. Indeed, sort of birds uh, like that. Yeah, it will, in winter it's full of birds feeding and sheltering within this plant. So this is a great example of a support plant in a food forest, isn't it? Indeed, yes. And this actually this plant was here. We didn't plant it. Okay. Uh, so we it still makes very, uh, as a still a very important function in the system. Yeah. So, so now with this approach, you we try to see all the positive things that you can yeah. harvest from what is already there, present in the area where you are. Designing. Absolutely, making use of what's already available. Um, so, ha a habitat bush, an ornamental habitat bush. Yeah, fantastic. All right, Could, shall we continue? Yes. Well, we always uh, don't have to go too far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we have, uh, we are in front of Arbutus unedo, it's called the strawberry tree in oh, English. Yeah. Yeah, strawberry uh, tree. It's a typical Mediterranean plant, you normally find this along the coast, uh -huh. uh, in the Mediterranean area. But we still try to plant it here in Parma and it's doing uh, great. It's doing uh, really it, well, isn't it? In a way, uh, unfortunately, because it means that the weather is becoming, the winter are becoming really mild. 
Yeah. The other side, uh, we have now found a plant that uh, can be useful in while we are adapting to this uh, changing climate. Yeah, yeah. You can see we normally flowers in this time of the year, where that is the, when winter is coming. Yep. Um, and then we'll, uh, the, the characteristic of this plant is that it flowers, uh, that the fruits mature the next year. It takes, it takes one year, so you will have maturing fruits together with the flowering of the current season. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, around the back here, we've got some rose hips. Yes. I just noticed them. Yeah, this is a very typical plant of our of the region. Uh, territory, yes. And of course, you can use the well, the petals of these plants to make uh, infusion and. We were, we were talking about yeah. Turkish delight yesterday, yes, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, it's yes. a key ingredient of Turkish delight is rose petals. And also the, um, the fruits. Yeah. You can um, like process them to make jellies and jams and flavorings. Yeah. 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 Rose water and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I'm uh, really attracted to about this garden is the fact that it's, you know, within high density development, um, you know, there's people right next to it and a lot of and you know quite a few people um was did you deliberately set out to do that or just you know this this is palmer palmer's pretty much have this is the sort of way people live in palmer and no we really wanted to be close to where people were living yeah for what i was saying earlier we really wanted to communicate yeah with people what we were uh, doing yeah and really connect people again with to, nature, to nature. production etc and then yeah so this needs to be where people live uh, live we are the only species in the world that uh, decided to live away from its food sources because yeah. Yeah. cities are kind of uh, food deserts uh, and we are the only species that uh, it does this <laughs> yeah it's, this, uh, it's interesting isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah let's walk around here because i just want to show Sort of how people connect in with the food forest so here we go there's you know this is this is where people live and so it's they've got immediate access to the to the food forest which is great and francesca and the group have put a sign in here and there's recycling bins and what have you yeah so people can come down start walking into the garden which is <laughs> which is great um yeah, this is some malva. Oh, malva. Volunteering plant. yeah it's planted in here yeah and again a very good plant for infusion very healthy yes yep yep fantastic and we you know we can keep on going but i think we might just stop mm -hmm. at this point because i i this is the more developed part of the food forest back behind us, isn't it? That we just walk through and then it starts to... Yes, um, let's say that in the first part, we cared a lot also for the herbaceous layer, while in the from yep. here onwards, we mainly walked on the other layer, so shrub and, and, and trees. And trees, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, mm. cool. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it at this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie.